having seen in a fair amount of detail how to solve recurrence equations. Let's now look at a few divide and conquer algorithms and analyze their running time applying the techniques that we have learned so far. Suppose you are asked to design an algorithm for computing a to the power n for some constant number a. How would you divide how would you design an efficient algorithm for computing this result? A brute force way to solve this problem would be to multiply a with itself n times. So we would take a, multiply it with itself, multiply it with itself again and do this n times or rather there would be n minus 1 multiplications. And the result here would be a to the power n. Now assuming that a multiplication operation takes a constant amount of time, the running time of this brute force algorithm for computing a to the power n would be some constant multiple of n minus 1 because if each multiplication takes a constant amount of time and if there are n minus 1 multiplications to be done then the running time will be proportional to n minus 1 and this we know is theta of n. So we can compute a to the power n in time theta of n using this brute force algorithm. Now can we do better than this? Can we have an algorithm that is more efficient or faster than this brute force algorithm? Let's try to use the divide and conquer strategy for solving this problem. So let's take an example. Suppose we had to compute a to the power 100. How could we compute this power without multiplying a with itself 100 times? Well, in, a, in a divide and conquer strategy, we can assume that somehow we have solutions to smaller subproblems. So let's say we, we were already given what a to the power 50 is. Could we use the solution to this subproblem to solve for the solution to this larger problem? Well, yes, if we just multiply a to the power 50 with itself, we'll get a to the power 100. So if we are given the solution to this problem, then with just one more multiplication, we can directly compute what a to the power 100 is. And how can we compute a to the power 50? Well, again, let's assume that we know the solution to a, to what this power is, a to the power 25. Well, we can just multiply a to the power 25 by itself to get a to the power 50. So you can see that the task of computing a to the power 100 can be reduced to the task of computing a to the power 50 with just one more multiplication needed after that. And the task of computing a to the power 50 can be reduced to the task of computing a to the power 25 with just one more multiplication needed to solve this larger problem. So in general, for a to the power n, where n is even, if we know the solution to this sub-problem of half the size. If we know what a to the power n by 2 is, we can just multiply a to the power n by 2 by itself to get a to the power n. So if t of n is the running time of the algorithm that computes a to the power n, then t of n can be expressed as the amount of time it takes to solve this sub-problem of half the size 
plus the amount of time it takes to multiply this number with itself, which is going to be a constant amount of time. What if n is odd? Let's say n is odd. So for example, how would we solve for a to the power 25? We can't cleanly divide this into two sub-problems, each of the same size. So let's divide it approximately into two sub-problems. So one of the sub-problems could be a to the power 12. The other sub-problem could be a to the power 13. This is one way to divide a to the power 25 into two smaller sub-problems. Now if we know the solution to this sub-problem a to the power 12, we can directly get what a to the power 13 is. We can just multiply a to the power 12 with a. So this gives us a strategy to divide this problem of size n when n is odd. When n is odd, we can write a to the power n as a to the power n minus 1 divided by 2. So if n is odd, n minus 1 would be even. So n minus 1 divided by 2 would be would be a whole number. So one of the sub-problems would be a to the power n minus 1 divided by 2. The other sub-problem would be a to the power n plus 1 divided by 2, which can be written as a to the power n minus 1 by 2 times a. So we are going to use, we are going to do this because we don't want to compute a to the power 13 separately, since if we are given what a to the power 12 is, we just need one more multiplication to compute a to the power 13. We don't have to again make a separate recursive call on this. So if this is the way we decide to divide this problem, then how much time would it take to compute t of n? We would need to compute t of, uh, we would need to compute a to the power n minus 1 by 2. So that would be t of, this is actually the floor of n by 2. When n is odd, the floor of n by 2 is n minus 1 divided by 2. For example, the floor of 25 by 2 is 12. And 25 minus 1 divided by 2 is also 12. So t of n here would be t of the floor of n by 2, which is the amount of time it would take to compute this power. And once we've computed this power, we need to multiply it by itself and then have another multiplication where we multiply the result with a. So we need two multiplications. So when n is even, we have this recurrence. When n is odd, we have this recurrence. And when n is even, it doesn't matter whether we write this as t of n by 2 or we write this as t of the floor of n by 2 because n by 2 is going to be a whole number. So we can just insert this floor operator here, which is kind of redundant, but it allows us to combine these two recurrences into a single recurrence, where we can say that the overall problem of size n can be divided into a problem of size, the floor of n by 2, plus some constant amount of work needed to combine or, or to create the solution to the overall problem from the solution to this sub-problem. And this constant amount of time could be either C or 2C depending on whether we are doing one multiplication or two multiplications. Now you can notice that this recurrence is basically the recurrence that we had for binary search. When we take a problem of size n, and we divide it into a problem of half the size by doing just a constant amount of work. 
So if we op if we unfold this recurrence, let me just call this constant as c. Every time we unfold this recurrence, we are eliminating half of the uh, original problem because we are reducing the problem down to a problem of at least half the size. So half of the uh, problem size is eliminated by doing just a constant amount of work. So when we open this recurrence one more time, we will again do a constant amount of work and we'll end up eliminating at least half of this particular problem size. So we'll end up with a problem of size the floor of n by 2 divided by 2 which is approximately one fourth of the original problem size. Let's just ignore the floor operator over here just to make things simple. It's not going to affect the overall asymptotic complexity. We can always prove that using the substitution method. But just to keep things simple here, let's just ignore the floor operator here since we don't expect it to change the overall asymptotic complexity of this recurrence. So we can have t of n as t of n by 4 plus c times c. This again can be unfolded to one more level and so on. After i steps, we will have t of n by 2 to the power i plus c appearing i times. And when will we stop? When this value n by 2 to the power i becomes equal to 1. That will be when i is log n to the base 2. In that case, this will become t of 1, the first term. And we'll have log n occurrences of c. c times log of n to the base 2. Now this is a constant. And this is some constant times log of n. So the overall asymptotic complexity of this algorithm is going to be theta of log of n. Now this is significantly better than the brute force algorithm we had where it took theta of n time. This was linear time, linear in the size of the input. This is time proportional to log of n. So this divide and conquer algorithm works better than the brute force algorithm. We could have also solved this recurrence t of n is t of n by 2 plus c using the master method. So a would be 1, b would be 2, n to the power log base b of a would be n to the power 0 which would be 1 and this is this has the same rate of growth as f of n which is also a constant. And so by case 2 of master theorem, we could have directly said that t of n is theta of 1 times log n or just log n. 